The uncanny call of the common loon has reverberated across placid Adirondack lakes for eons. A Saranac Lake loon organization wants to protect that sound, keeping it alive forever. One way of doing that is that each year, they send a canoe with three environmentalists in it onto a lake after dark. They spotlight a floating loon and harmlessly net the normally elusive bird. When we see a bird, then we, um, then we play chick calls, which they're begging calls, and the adults come into the boat um, for that. And then we also play the hoot calls, and the chicks will come in for that. And they will literally get this close to the boat. You can, sometimes you can touch them, but then we scoop them out of the water with a big net. Shock is also a veterinarian. She has studied loons since 1998. Shock's crew has investigated 90 lakes and sampled over 300 birds. She said that they use Adirondack lakes where loons catch and eat fish. The lakes serve as a sentinel to measure the impact of mercury pollution that belches from coal-fired power plants. The common loon swims underwater to catch fish. It swallows most of its prey underwater. Biologists estimate that two loons and two chicks eat about a half ton of fish over a 15-week period. The goal of catching the birds is to draw a blood sample, and the blood sample tells us how much mercury they've eaten in the last month or so. It also tells us a lot of information about the health of the birds. I work with WCS closely with the veterinarians here, and so trying to get an, an idea of the overall health of the population and then the health of individual birds. Feather samples are also taken and analyzed for the long-term health of the bird. The mercury is a worldwide problem. The emissions are blown worldwide. Coal-fired power plants in other countries like China and India have been a big problem. But fortunately, um, the United Nations Environment Program, has, there's now a, a, a treaty that's been signed, the Minamata Convention. In the case of loons in the Adirondacks, we're finding high mercury birds on the acidic lakes, and that is because um, there's a bacteria in the acidic lakes that uh, likes the sulfur dioxide, and that bacteria converts elemental mercury to methyl mercury at a higher rate. So the birds living in acidic lakes in the park have much higher mercury levels, and they don't reproduce as well. And we also put um, bracelets on them. We have the USGS uh, bird banding lab bracelet, which has numbers on it. So if somebody finds an individual bird, we, we hear about it through them, and we know what happened to that bird. Sometimes now with the digital photography, people are able to photograph that metal band and actually get the numbers off of it. While the tuxedo plume bird gives out a haunting sound, it has a meaningful language to it, such as a danger warning. That's a whale, and there's a yodel. Both males and females wail, and that tells us about long-term, I'm sorry, it's a long-distance communication between the adults. The male yodels when he's alarmed and upset. The females can't yodel. The bird banding takes place at Little Clear Boat Launch, not far from the Lake Clear Fish Hatchery. Trained volunteers work quickly and efficiently using headlamps to see with. They want to return the birds to the lake as quickly as possible, reducing stress on them. Research and banding nights like this and the ones in the past are proving beneficial to the birds and pointing out to the coal-fired power industry the danger they put into the land and lakes. For Mountain Lake Journal, I'm Jack LeDuc on Little Clear Pond.